Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So today we are discussing the contemporary period in English literature, uh, in the history of English literature. So the period begins after 1939, or in uh, another way, like after World War II. So this is the time frame, the period when it begins. Uh, it is called contemporary period because it is continuous and going on still. So uh, till present, whatever is written is a part of it. So uh, this begins with movement poetry. So the movement poetry uh, is also part of it, uh, which was uh, uh, a reaction to the World War and its horrors. Uh, and Philip Larkin was uh, the leader of uh, that age or that uh, kind of writing style. So as far as Philip Larkin is concerned, he was uh, the main figure from the movement poetry. But that was a very short-lived period. And the uh, rest of the period that uh, is called postmodernism or postmodern literature. So postmodern literature, uh, this term was coined by uh, uh, Franco uh, Leitrud. So uh, Franco Leitrud, he went to uh, the Disneyland for the first time, and he saw and said, "We are entering in the postmodern world." So that is, uh, although this term was also used in 1870, but uh, this was now a, a proper use of the term as far as the philosophy was concerned. So this came to, uh, to literature. Now, as far as this is concerned, uh, this is the time when World War is ending. So after World War till now is the contemporary age, which includes uh, the movement poetry, which also includes the postmodern age. Uh, the World War ends and leaves its horrors behind. So, so many people are dead. You must have gone through the book, The Boy Comes Home, that is a play. So that is about the same thing, that people were disillusioned in their lives. They didn't know what to do. They spent, like, like volunteer soldiers, they went into the war. And then when they left the war, they thought that uh, they have got nothing uh, left to do. Business technology So it was a time of disillusionment. So World War Kendar bombs to Gire Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Pe. It also su suggested that the uh, world can uh, end any time. So is Chisek pessimistic Fizati Jo Logon Kyo Patari Yogi. So uh, a lot of pessimism in seeing the works written afterwards. Uh, or we to trend ek uncertainty ki fizati. That very uncertainty that was developed in the world after Hiroshima and Nagasaki incident, uh, like uh, that is still prevailing. Or what uncertainty we can see even in the poems, like up the uh, contemporary age ka literature or previous literature, especially in poetry. You will read it, you will get a very complex nazar aata hai, the modern literature. Because the thoughts are si very uncertain after that. Uh, very attack. Now, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, just for information, these atom bombs are not going to Like, a Zor bomb, uh, Zor bomb, that is another kind of a bomb, which is 100 times more dangerous, which is the case of Russia. So, uh, God forbid if such calamity happens, we can think that how many events are going to disturb us. So, these two bombs in the world history could change Cartier. So US became the major eco economic power. Uh, balance of power was changed. Russia and uh, England, uh, they were no more in the list of uh, superpowers. So all the thing was now controlled by USA, who was not there in First World War, but uh, was there in second one. Or England, that became weaker. England comes over again, or England apni colonies ko establish khatam karne ki koshish ki. Forty five mein ye cheese certain ho gayi. Forty seven mein hum dekhte hain ki we got independence, India ko independence mili. To kyunki ab England control nahi kar pa raha tha. Moreover, there were certain clashes in England. England was 
फाइटिंग विद इन इट सेल्फ कि बाहर की लड़ाइयां तो जितनी थी वो हो गई ना रिच एंड पुअर की एक लड़ाई थी विद इन ब्रिटेन फिर कैथोलिक्स एंड प्रोटेस्टेंट्स हमेशा से लड़ रहे थे ना स्पेशली इन आयरलैंड विच इज पार्ट विच वॉज अ पार्ट ऑफ इंग्लैंड उसके अंदर खराबियां मजीद पैदा हो गई फिर एम्प्लॉयड और अनएम्प्लॉयड इनकी एक हैव्स और हैव्स नॉट की एक लड़ाई शुरू हो गई फिर जो ब्रिटिश जो डोमिनेट डोमिनेटेड एरिया है जिसमें स्कॉटलैंड इंग्लैंड वेल्स आयरलैंड ये सारे इनके अंदर बदअमनी थी सो ऑल दिस टूगेदर मेड इंग्लैंड मोर वीक सो यूएस गॉट द बेनिफिट ऑफ इट एंड बिकेम द सुपर पावर so from the movement poetry we see philip larkin as top of the list uh, along with certain uh, like minor poets so i'm not mentioning them here so philip larkin uh, wrote uh, top class poetry which was uh, about that movement poetry which was definitely uh, a, like uh, a result of uh, world wars then rendell jarrell is there uh, so with this uh, this was ted hughes not uh, jerel uh, ted hughes uh, you can get it as ted hughes so ted hughes was uh, the husband of sylvia plath and uh, the marriage continued for a time but uh, eventually it went into a disaster khatam ho gayi thi so he wrote uh, thought fox snowdrop uh, night ride on ariel hawk roosting so these were his famous works John Ashbery in the same time he is writing self portrait in a convex mirror uh so this is about an italian painter uh who was uh, painting himself and he had a deformity to uske haath ek haath jo tha wo kafi bada tha jism ke muqable mein to wo convex mirror mein apne aap ko paint karta hai jisme automatically insaan ka front part thoda sa uh zyada feel hota hai bada aur piche thoda sa zoom in hua hota hai so it was a masterpiece so he writes about that then he talks about the poem painter wet casements jisme he talks about uh, uh, the ongoing activities through the pane of a window adwin rich was there in the same time and uh, she was uh, uh, writing about uh, the role of women so she was a champion of women women liberation movements jisko humne last mein discuss kiya ki ab काफी पॉपुलर हो रही थी तो उनको बहुत ज्यादा सक्सेस मिली एंड एडविन एडविन रिच शी वाज अ चैंपियन ऑफ सच वुमेन हु वर फाइटिंग फॉर दिस कॉज सिल्विया प्लाथ वाज देयर सो सिल्विया प्लाथ द वाइफ ऑफ टेड ह्यूज शी वाज ऑलरेडी देयर शी वाज आल्सो फाइटिंग फॉर द राइट्स ऑफ वुमेन उसकी जो पोएम्स हैं जिसमें लेडी लेजरस एंड डैडी दे आर अबाउट द फ्रीडम और इमेंसिपेशन ऑफ वुमेन इसकी और भी बहुत सारी मशहूर पोइम्स हैं लेकिन सबसे ज्यादा एरियल इज द टॉप मोस्ट एरियल के बारे में टेड ह्यूज ने भी लिखा इसने भी लिखा सो एरियल वाज द नेम ऑफ देयर हॉर्स जो कॉमन हॉर्स था उसका नाम भी एरियल था शी वाज इंस्पायर्ड बाय बीज तो उसने बीज का जिक्र किया अराइवल ऑफ द बी बॉक्स बी मीटिंग सिल्विया का फादर भी बड़ा इंटरेस्ट लेता था बीज के अंदर पॉपिस एन अक्टूबर वॉज एनदर Uh, important poem by Sylvia Plath. So uh, most uh, of her work is, uh, or all these works that we are um, we have mentioned so far, they include pessimism. A male-dominated society, a pessimistic world, which the World War ke effects are. We see in in poems. Me nazar aate. Uske alawa John Hershey hai, Flannery O'Connor hai, Bernard Marmont hai, Lawrence hai. Uh, with their works jo ke they cited here and they are also there in uh, the book that i have also already sent you in pdf form among all these is famous uh, the most famous is toni morrison so she is the author of uh, jazz so jazz is a famous novel in last uh, uh, meeting we were discussing about harlem uh, renaissance so she talks about that very renaissance in that time uh, in america when people were shifting and migrating from small areas to huge places manhattan new york they were settling there and uh, this is a story of a couple that we are going to talk about in uh, uh, upcoming a couple of lectures after that we see martin king luther uh, junior 
and John F. Kennedy, who was also president, uh, Alice Walker. They were famous people of the time uh, with their uh, considerable works. Uh, apart from them, there was uh, Harper Lee, another, like uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. It is a very famous book by Harper Lee. So uh, all together, people, there, there's so many people. There's a huge list of authors who are there in contemporary period uh, and talking about their several themes. This is a huge list of all those people, of those American poets who were there in this contemporary period, who were there and who are still, some, some of them are still alive and writing their works. So major themes in this age, like so there are certain themes which are common to some particular person, and some themes are there which are uh, generally uh, uh, an essence of the age. So we find irony, playfulness, and black humor. We know what irony is. Playfulness is the use of uh, comedy in, uh, or that is uh, in an ironic way, tongue in cheek. Uh, uh, we use the term tongue in cheek for such uh, irony and uh, playfulness. Then there was black humor. So black humor, now this thing was there in fiction uh, most of all. We can see that. Uh, uh, Linda uh, Hudson claimed postmodern fiction as a whole. Uh, it could be characterized by ironic quote marks that much of it can be taken as tongue in cheek. So, apart from this tongue in cheek, which is displayed in the player of the text by uh, Ronald Brothers, uh, there is black humor. So, black humor is a kind of humor in which we use the taboo words. The taboo words hote, unko use kiya jata hai. Uh, for example, in Catch 22, to usme taboo words ko use kiya jata hai, fun create karne ke liye. So taboo words are not uh, socially acceptable in society, but they are there to create amusement. Then we find intertextuality. So uh, this term was coined by Julia Kristeva. And it was coined in 1966. So intertextuality is uh, uh, like uh, there are two relationships going on whenever we read a text. When we read something, there are two relations established. One relation is that we are in the author's horizontal axis. And one other relation is that the text and the text is in the vertical axis. Pe hai. So intertextuality talks about the vertical axis. Yani a text or uska dusre text ke saath jo relation hai, jo comparison hai, that may be in form of translation, that may be in form of reproduction, ya uski, uh, uski extension. Ye intertextuality hai ki aap ek text ka usko uh, ek relationship determine kar raha hai author kisi dusre text ke saath, kisi bhi yonra ke andar, kisi bhi form ke andar. So, the author cover our access is uh, what he is thinking and how we are getting what he is thinking. Like in the horizontal axis, the vertical axis is me that one text ka dusre text ke saath relation. This is a cross uh, examples quote, karte, cross references that they have a bath, usne is bath ko essay kaha, usne is bath ko essay mention kiya. So, this is intertextuality. So, this was there in many fictional works or novels. Pastiche, this was uh, another term. So it was like a collage. It's not about creating something from scratch, but drawing on what already exists. So this is not about creativity. This is not about novelty. So there are all sorts of ways in which text can uh, reference other text. But what a pastiche does is imitate other text or yon was. ये बाकी टेक्स्ट को इमिटेट किया जाता है इसमें और उनको आ, बाकी जो जॉनर्स हैं पोइट्री नोवेल उनको इमिटेट किया जाता है एंड दैट इज नॉट ओनली इमिटेशन उनको यूज करके थोड़ी सी आ, उसके अंदर क्रिएटिविटी का एडिशन सो so, ये भी था कि जो वर्क्स से पुराने बहुत अच्छे लिखे गए थे 
उनकी रिप्रोडक्शन इसके अंदर थी उसमें गॉथिक नॉवल हो सकते हैं मेलोड्रामाज हो सकते हैं एनी like they were not stick to something particular they could get the material from any time uh, written in the history and they could reproduce it then there is matter fiction so matter fiction was the term was first used by william h cass in 1970 in his essay philosophy and the form of fiction so first time isne is term ko use kiya william h cass ne The so six. the word wow. matter fiction yeah. it signals the kind of text that emphasizes its status as a text like text is text nothing else matter fiction is 100% aware of the fact that it is fiction the important part eh? so literature may try to be naturalistic or realistic but post modern uh, it doesn't hide what it is so matter fiction kya basically ye उससे पहले जो लिटरेचर लिखा गया उसके अंदर अगर फिक्शन दिखाई जा रही थी तो उसमें बताया जाता था शो किया जाता था गुमान किया जाता था कोशिश की जाती थी कि नेचुरलिस्टिक लगे रियलिस्टिक लगे कंटेम्प्रेरी पोइट्री इज नॉट कंसर्न विद दिस सॉरी लिटरेचर और फिक्शन स्पेशली इट इज नॉट कंसर्न विद दिस थिंग दे बिलीव इन द रियल बेसिस ऑफ द फिक्शन कि अगर हमने कोई फिक्टिशियस करेक्टर बनाया है तो इट शुड साउंड लाइक फिक्टिशियस वन उस पर रियलिटी की तरफ ना लेके आए वो रियलिटी को प्रवोक ना करें सो दिस इज दिस वॉज अ मिक्सचर ऑफ रियलिटी एंड फिक्शन विच वॉज नॉट यूज बिफोर और जो हम कॉमिक्स देखते हैं वो इसके रिजल्ट में ही ज्यादा सामने आए कि कॉमिक्स लिखे गए ये मार्वल हीरो सुपरमैन ये सारे वो ये कि वी बिलीव इन देर एग्जिस्टेंस एज फिक्शन नॉट इन रियलिटी रियलिटी में हमने उन पर बिलीव नहीं किया हाँ कॉलरेज जो बनाता था वो इस तरह दिखाता था कि वो चीज वाकई एग्जिस्ट कर रही है गोस्ट वगैरह लेकिन इन्होंने इस चीज को प्रॉपरली शो कराया कि दिस इज ओनली फिक्शन ये सिर्फ फिक्शनल वर्क है इसके रियलिटी से कोई ताल्लुक नहीं है टर्म दिस विच इज क्वाइन बाय एलेस्टर फॉलर सो इट इज अ it is a specific type of matter fiction so ye uski ek further type hai sub type hai meta fiction ki jisme uh, process hai creation ka uh, the uh, uh, the phenomenon is calculated to offer opportunities to explore the boundaries of fiction and reality the fiction or reality ki boundaries ko isme dekha jata hai ya limits of narrative truths किस हद तक नरेटिव ट्रुथ की बाउंड्रीज तक हम जा सकते हैं किस हद तक हम सच बयान कर सकते हैं द बुक विल बी अबाउट द प्रोसेस ऑफ क्रिएटिंग द बुक और इंक्लूड्स अ सेंट्रल मट फॉर फॉर दिस प्रोसेस की जो सेटर रेस्ट है दैट इज एग्जांपल ऑफ इट सो इट इज अरेटिव फ्रस्ट्रेटेड अटेम्प्ट टेल हिज ओन स्टोरी जो अपनी स्टोरी बताना चाह रहा है लेकिन ही इज फ्रस्ट्रेटेड इन दैट वो उसको सही तरह बयान नहीं कर पा रहा सो दिस इज अंड ऑफ मेटा फिक्शन ये मेटा फिक्शन की ही एक किस्म है जिसमें कोई फॉर एग्जाम्पल देखिये मैं इसकी एक एग्जाम्पल ऐसे दूंगा कि अगर हमने रियलिटी ही बयान करनी है तो हम उसमें बहुत ज्यादा फिक्शन ऐड नहीं करेंगे हाँ मैं किसी को एक अपनी लाइफ से रिलेटेड एक झूठ जोक सुना के तो हंसा सकता हूँ लेकिन एक सच्चा इंसिडेंट जैसे शायद लोगों को इतनी हंसी नहीं आएगी तो है तो वो सच मेरी लाइफ में तो वो चीज हुई लेकिन वो इतना बयान करने वाला है नहीं कि लोग उस पर ज्यादा हंसे तो ये लोग क्या थे इस लिहाज से फ्रस्ट्रेटेड हो जाते थे अपनी बातों को बयान करके बिकॉज दे वर लीस्ट इंटरेस्टेड इन यूजिंग मच ऑफ द फिक्शनल वर्क दे बिलीव इन रियलिटी के वट रियलिटी इज दैट शुड बी एग्जैक्टली प्रेजेंटेड इन द राइटिंग देन देर इज टेम्पोरल डिस्टोर्शन टेम्पोरल डिस्टोर्शन इज अनादर कॉमन technique in the modern literature isme we uh, violate the chronology hum time frame ko non linear narratives mein dekhte hain ke time frame ko distort kiya ja raha hai uh, for example in stream of consciousness hum dekhte hain ke time frame ka proper khayal nahi likha rakha ja raha in a chronological way us to jo chronological sequence hota hai uske andar ye cheez nahi hoti 
لیکن اس میں ٹیمپورل ڈسٹورشن اس میں ہم دیکھتے ہیں کہ کافی حد تک جو چیزیں ہیں وہ ڈسٹورٹڈ ہیں ٹائم لائن ڈسٹورٹڈ ہے فیوچر پریزنٹ پاسٹ یہ ایک ترتیب سے نہیں ہے ان کے اندر ڈفرینٹ سی چینجز آ جاتی ہیں سو وی آلسو فائنڈ سچ تھنگس ان ناولس ریٹن ان دا پریزنٹ ٹائمس اینڈ آلسو دا موویز آف دا پریزنٹ ٹائمس جن کو دیکھنے کے لیے ہمیں بڑا غور کرنا پڑتا ہے فار ایگزامپل جس میں ٹائم لیپس کی ٹائم لیپس کی موویز ہیں یا جس میں لوپنگ لوپ کی موویز ہیں جس میں ایک لوپ چل رہا ہے اور ایک سیم اسٹوری ریپیٹ ہو رہی ہے سو یہ بیسیکلی ٹیمپورل ڈسٹورشنز ہیں دین دیر از میجیکل ریئلزم سو دس از آلسو لٹری ورک اینڈ اٹ ہیز لائک اسموتھلی پینٹڈ امیجز آف فگرز اینڈ آبجیکٹس ڈپکٹیڈ ان سر ریئلسٹک مانا سو سر ریئلزم کیا تھا ہم نے پڑھا تھا کہ جب ہمارا کانشیس مائنڈ بھی کریٹو ہوا ہوتا ہے سو دا تھیم اینڈ سبجیکٹس آر آفن امیجنری سم وٹ آؤٹلینڈش اینڈ فینٹیسٹک اینڈ دے ہیو سرٹن ڈریم لائک کوالٹی تو اس میں بیسیکلی کیا ہے کہ وی ہیو سرٹن پلاٹس جو کہ بظاہر بڑے لائک دکھایا ریئلسٹک مینر میں جا رہا ہے لیکن دے آر ویری فینٹیسٹک بزار ہے اسکل فل ٹائم شفٹس آ رہی ہیں اس میں لائبرن تھین یعنی بڑے بھول بھلائیاں سی ہیں اس پلاٹ کے اندر نریٹو ہیں یعنی اے ڈریم ود ان اے ڈریم اے ڈریم اے اسٹوری اسٹوری سو لائک لائک ایڈورڈ بونڈ کا جو پلے ہے دا سی اس کو جو ہم دیکھتے ہیں تو ایک پلے ہے اس پلے کے اندر بھی ایک پلے پرفارم ہو رہا ہے بڑی ایکسپریشنسٹکس جو ٹیکنیکس ہیں یا سر ریئلسٹک ڈسکرپشنز ہوتی ہیں اس کے اندر لائک دیر سرٹن موویز جس میں ایک کریکٹر سوتا ہے تو وہ ایک ڈریم میں چلا جاتا ہے پھر اس ڈریم میں وہ سوتا ہے تو ایک اور ڈریم میں چلا جاتا ہے سو ڈریم ود ان اے ڈریم ود ان اے ڈریم سو دس از اے کائنڈ آف میجیکل ریئلزم جس کو ہمیں اس سے دکھایا جا رہا ہے کہ دس از اے کائنڈ آف ریئل تھنگ وچ از ہیپننگ بٹ وی آلسو فائنڈ کہ دس مے بی سم تھنگ میجیکل ان اٹ ٹیکنو کلچر اینڈ ہائپر ریئلٹی وی فائنڈ دا ٹیکنو کلچر دا ایکسپینشن آف ٹیکنالوجی آل اوور اینڈ وی آلسو فائنڈ دیٹ سرٹن تھنگس ہیو لائک میڈ ہیومن بینگس دا سلیوس آف ٹیکنالوجی مور اوور دیٹ از انکلوڈیڈ ان لائف ایز اے کلچر سو دیٹ از اے ٹیکنو کلچر مور اوور ہائپر ریئلٹی از دیر سو سم آتھرس اینڈ تھیرسٹ ویلکم پوسٹ ماڈرنزم ود اوپن آرمس but certain people are there which argue that it is not all the fun and game uh guy debord he wrote an influential book called the society of a spectacle in 1967 he flagged the downsides of a world in which the media had seemingly invaded every corner of society his conclusion was that we are now living in a society which nothing there's nothing uh, real anymore and everything is merely a representation so for example if uh, there is some person who is uh, in such a place where there are so many cameras so he cannot be real so wo real behave nahi kar sakta a true man show was a movie of this kind jisme ek shakhs ke upar cameras hote hain and it is a it is the world's biggest reality show a reality shows bhi aap logon ne dekhe honge so that is based on this hyper reality concept it is real hai. میں ریئل بیہیو کروں دا وے آئی ہیو ٹو اینڈ دین اف آئی ایم فوکسڈ بائی میڈیا اور کیمراز تو میں زیادہ ہی ہائپر ریئلی ریئلٹی میں بلیو کروں گا سو یہ بھی چیز بہت زیادہ حصہ بن گئی تھی لیکن ون تھنگ وی نیڈ ٹو تھنک اباؤٹ دس از کہ جو ماڈرن ایج تھی سوری پوسٹ ماڈرن ایج کنٹمپریری ایج دے ناٹ اسٹکنگ ٹو ون پوائنٹ اگر آپ کو کہیں پہ لگ رہا ہے کہ کوئی تھیم ریئلٹی کو فیور کر رہا ہے کوئی تھیم فکشن کو فیور کر رہا ہے تو کر رہا ہے کیونکہ ریزن یہ ہے کہ جو کنٹمپریری ایج ہے دے آر ناٹ آفٹر سرٹن جینرک تھیم ان کے بہت سارے ورائٹی ہے کچھ لوگ ریئلٹی کو فوکس کر رہے ہیں کچھ امیجنیشن کو فوکس کر رہے ہیں کچھ سائنٹیفک انوینشنس کو فوکس کر رہے ہیں سو بالکل ڈائیورس قسم کا لٹریچر ہے جو کہ اس ایج میں لکھا جا رہا ہے پیرانویا از دیر which is seen that uh, we are uh, uh, mistrusting people, we are not uh, believing in them. Or this uh, is very common, which we can find in society. Mein. 
देन देर इज मिनिमलिज्म सो मिनिमलिज्म क्या है कि थोड़ा लिखा जाए शॉर्ट स्टोरीज जो है दे शुड बी स्लाइस ऑफ लाइफ उसके अंदर स्पेसिफिक होकर लिखना चाहिए एक्स्ट्रा एडजेक्टिव एडवर्ब मीनिंगलेस डिटेल्स नहीं होनी चाहिए सो मिनिमलिस्ट जो राइटर्स थे दे बिलीव इन क्वालिटी वर्क एंड अ कॉम्पैक्ट काइंड ऑफ राइटिंग फ्रांसिस बेकन की तरह जिसे फ्रांसिस बेकन लिखता था और इफ वी गो टू द प्लेस इफ यू रीड द प्लेस ऑफ सैम्यूल बैकेट तो वेटिंग फॉर गुडो को पढ़ के आप उसमें देखेंगे कि बहुत शॉर्ट वर्ड्स का यूज किया गया कोई एक्स्ट्रा लेंथी डिटेल्स या डायलॉग्स नहीं है लेकिन उसका एक सेकेंड पार्ट जो कि मैक्सिमलिज्म है दिस इज ऑल्सो यूज बाय सर्टेन ऑथर्स सम बिलीव इन दम सम बिलीव इन डिटेल्स दे बिलीव इन एम्रेसिंग एक्सेस और काफी डिटेल लिखते हैं सो ये जो है बेसिकली पोस्ट मॉडर्निज्म स्टिक टू एनी हार्ड एंड फास्ट रूल्स ए टेक्स कैन बी ऑफ एनी लेंथ इनकी कोई भी लेंथ हो सकती है देर इज नो हार्ड एंड फास्ट रूल कि इस एज में छोटे टेक्स लिखे गए लेकिन मुख्तलिफ किस्म के लोग थे और मुख्तलिफ किस्म की राइटिंग सामने आई थी सो दिस इज बेसिकली पोस्ट कलोनियलिज्म सो पोस्ट कलोनियलिज्म इट वॉज कंसर्न विद पोलिटिकल एस्थेटिक इकोनॉमिक हिस्टोरिकल एंड सोशल इम्पैक्ट ऑफ यूरोपियन कलोनियल रूल अराउंड द वर्ल्ड सो इसमें इनका जो जहाँ पे इनके असरा थे फॉर एग्जाम्पल थिंग्स फॉलो पार्ट हम देखते हैं दैट इज पार्ट ऑफ एट उसके बाद हार्ट ऑफ डार्कनेस जिस तरह था फिर द लॉर्ड ऑफ द फ्लाइज विलियम गोल्डिंग का तो ये बेसिकली ये पोस्ट कलोनियल वर्कस जिसमें हमें बताया जा रहा है कि यूरोपियंस जो थे उन्होंने उनका बिहेवियर क्या था उन्होंने ग्लोबल लेवल पे जब अपने आप को एक मॉडर्न शो करके अफ्रीका फॉर एग्जांपल में जाके उससे एनलाइटनमेंट करने की कोशिश की तो इनफैक्ट वहां पे क्या चल रहा था सो पोस्ट कॉलोनियल लिटरेचर इज अबाउट दोज कंट्रीज जो कि सप्रेस्ड रहे उनके बारे में जो लिटरेचर लिखा गया या उस जो उनके साथ जुल्म हुए जो उस पर लिखा गया एज फार एज पाकिस्तानी लिटरेचर इज कंसर्न ड्यूरिंग द पोस्ट मॉडर्न और अहमद अली लाइक ही रोड ट्वाइलाइट इन डेली जो कि बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट वर्क था इसका अपार्ट फ्रॉम अदर थिंग्स जो ज्यादा फेमस था विच वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट द ट्वाइलाइट ऑफ द मुस्लिम इन डेली बेसिकली हनीब कुरैशी वेरी फेमस पर्सन still there and writing uh, writing his works and then uh, we find subkar goes he is uh, like uh, uh, the murder of aziz khan is and so many short stories written by him atia hussain she was uh, she was uh, like uh, no more in uh, after 1998 but she wrote many uh, short stories novels and uh, poems after her we see uh, sara soleri uh, born in 1953 so meatless days and rhetoric of english india boys will be boys then we have adam zamin azad uh, he is uh, the writer of the 13 house and winner of the prize for fiction tarikali he was a historian he was writer he was a novelist and he was a political analyst he wrote so many things so many pamphlets so many uh, books novels muniza shamsi uh, the hybrid tapestries and her daughter kamila uh, shamsi her uh, award winning novel was home fire in 2017 mohsin hamid uh, still winning uh, moth smoke and the reluctant fundamentalist there are his best books and uh, one of the best selling books in from pakistani writers there so this was all together uh, and this is a list of uh, some other writers the pakistani writers who are writing in english so this was all together the post colonial uh, and the, the post modern literature the literature which which was written in the present times 
which is written in present times and whatever is written will be a part of uh, the same age.